Hello and welcome to Disney Travel Tales, episode number 22. This is usually a space where you can immerse yourself in someone's recent Disney trip, but today we are doing something a little different. I'm talking with my son Asher about going on a Disney vacation with someone who doesn't love Disney. I know it might seem crazy, but yes, there are those that do not love Disney. And guess what? I live with two of them. Now this episode is going to be mostly focused on Disney World, only because when you go to Disney World, you really are in a bubble. Your entire trip revolves around Disney. This is less the case at Disneyland because it's easier to get around the area since it's in the middle of a city. Also, typically people spend less time at the parks and usually build in time for sightseeing. This show is sponsored by Trolley Lane Travel. If you're thinking about traveling to any Disney resort or even taking a Disney cruise, then having a travel agent will not only save you time, but also money. With all the exciting things going on at the parks right now, there really is no better time to visit. Owner Becky and her agents are experts at Disney travel. Visit them at trolleylanetravel.com and go to their request a quote page for a free, no obligation quote. Get your magical vacation started today. If you book a vacation with them and want to be on the show, let your agent know. This is how I get my guest. Okay, Asher, so let's get going. Let me do a little introduction. You are my second child. You're my second son. And while you do enjoy Disney vacations, it's not your favorite, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like going on Disney vacations because they're exciting, but there are some parts of uh, Disney that I do not enjoy. So for our listeners, you and your dad, my husband, Cameron, y'all are not the biggest Disney fans. However, I keep dragging y'all on Disney trips. So on our last vacation, I learned a couple of tips that made the Disney vacation more exciting for y'all being not the biggest Disney fans, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's start with tip number one, finding good restaurants and eating outside of the parks. Even though y'all aren't the biggest Disney fans, y'all are big fans of good food, right? Yeah. So I did a little bit of research and I tried to find restaurants that first of all, had food that everyone was going to like. And secondly, might have been outside of the park in different resorts that we could go visit so that we could get out of the parks during the day and kind of have a breather and take a break from all the crowds and all the chaos and go have a nice relaxing meal somewhere. So what was one of the fa- your favorite restaurants that we ate at? Uh, my favorite meal that we got was at Beaches and Cream. And I also like seeing the resort there because the pool area was really cool. The whole resort was a giant place and it was really cool. My favorite place I got dessert was Sanag because we got like this little like mud cake with uh, like crumbled up uh, chocolate pieces, gummy worms and peanut butter. And it tasted really good. Yeah, it was really fun. We had never been to either the beach resort or... Animal Kingdom Lodge. And so getting out and getting to see those resorts was really cool. It kind of uh, made the day seem better, right? Yeah. So tip number two would be having your non-Disney fan help you pick the resort you're going to be staying at. So when we went on our very first trip to Disney World, we stayed at the All-Star Sports Resort. It was just at the time the boys were younger. Um, I thought they were going to really enjoy the big statues, just the kind of over-the-top sports theme of it, and they really did. Yeah, it was my favorite resort probably out of every single resort there because I'm a big fan of sports, and we stayed at in the football part, which had this football field, and it was uh, fun to play on. And we also walked over to the baseball area, and I had a, a pool shaped in the baseball field, and we swam in that for a bit. When we got back from our last trip, I kind of just sat down with the kids, and just for fun, we kind of planned their dream Disney vacations if they were going to go to Disney just one-on-one with me. And what resort did you pick, Asher? Uh, the sports resort. Yeah, and that is definitely not a resort that I would have picked, 
if we were going to be going on that vacation. So that's why I think it's really important to let your family member or your friend who you're going with to kind of help make that choice of where you're going to stay, because that could really be the difference for them getting to go back to the resort that they're comfortable at, or that they really like at the end of a long day at the park. Tip number three, try out a water park. This is another thing when Asher talked about his dream Disney vacation was going to a water park. I never would go to Disney and go to a water park, even though I've heard they're really fun, just because personally, that's not something I like, but that is definitely something that he would be interested in, right? Yeah, I I'm, I'm really like water parks. I haven't been to one yet, but next time we go, I really want to go to one. What about going to a water park do you think would be fun? Probably just being able to relax, get in the water a bit, all the slides they have or any extra stuff that they might have for me to do. Yeah, I think it'd be really fun to try it out. And especially for your non-Disney park fan, going to a water park might have a more relaxed atmosphere. Tip number four, go to Disney Springs. This was something we did not do on our first trip to Disney as a family, but we did do on our last trip that we just went on in March, and we had the best time in Disney Springs, and both you and your dad loved Disney Springs. Yeah, I really like Disney Springs. One thing I was kind of disappointed about is they didn't have the NBA experience open, but that's that was just because of COVID, but I would have really liked going there, but all the stores there were really cool. They had a lot of options, and they had a big candy store, and I love candy, so that was nice. They had a big uh, M&M store where you could go get literally any flavor of M&Ms. They had a Lego store. They had their own like little Disney store, and they were selling like baseball jerseys and stuff, and it was really interesting and cool. And they have lots of restaurants. The walking around was really fun. Um, it was just a really fun way to spend our evening, and we ended up going on our travel day. So that kind of worked out well for us. But yeah, Disney Springs is really fun. And even though it is crowded at times, it doesn't have that like shoulder to shoulder standing in line feeling like you have at the theme parks. Yeah, you get it. It's a big place. So you're spaced out a bunch. And the best time to go is probably around the nighttime because there's not too many people there because they're usually at their resort resting probably for the next day. Tip number five, have a rest day. This was something else we learned on this trip. Our rest day actually ended up being the day right after our travel day. It just worked out well for us at the time. But I think one of the reasons people kind of get a bad rap about Disney is because they just like go nonstop. They just go, go, go. They never take the time to rest. And for some people, just kind of relaxing and seeing other things is really important. Yeah, it felt really nice to do our rest day because we weren't really rushed to go anywhere. We were really enjoying ourselves, going to look at all the different resorts, going to eat at different places. And it was really fun. Did our... Did going to the different resorts kind of make you look at Disney differently? Uh, yeah, because instead, like, they had different resorts that were different themes, and they weren't just, like, straight-up Disney themes. They had some stuff that you probably never think Disney would have themed, but they did, and they had big areas for you to just go play stuff or do stuff. Something we did on our rest day, which is our next tip, was try out one of the miniature golf courses. This was actually Asher's idea. After we had had lunch at Beaches and Cream, we were kind of just walking around and we weren't ready to leave that area yet. So Asher's the one who brought up, why don't we try miniature golf? Yeah, the miniature golf was uh, really fun. The courses were uh, not easy to play on. I got last place because I missed every single hole. But it was a fun experience because I've always liked playing miniature golf. And the courses there were really nice, and it was a lot bigger than what you would see probably in your um, hometown. So it was really nice going there and just playing with my family. So we went to Fantasia Springs, which was over by the Swan and Dolphin Hotel. Since we were kind of in that area, we just walked on over there. And there are two different courses that you can choose from once you're there. One is your more traditional golf miniature golf course with the big statues and the you know fun little greens 
but the other one was actually more like a traditional golf course, and that's the one we played. Yeah, it was really hard. Uh, it wasn't easy. Every time I would hit a ball, it would just roll back or roll uh, way to the other side, and it, yeah, it didn't make me too happy, but I had fun. But it was a lot of fun. We kind of made, I don't know, we were joking around the whole time. We had a great time. Now, I wouldn't recommend that course if you have small kids. My daughter was eight at the time, and it was really hard for her. So her and, ha- so her and I kind of tag-teamed and played together. But we ended up doing pretty good. Okay, so let's move now back to the parks with our tips. Tip number seven. Don't make them go on rides they don't want to go on. Yeah, there are a few rides that I just really didn't want to go on. I'm not really a big fan of uh, fast roller coasters. And if you're not a big fan, I wouldn't recommend going on rock and roller coaster. Because that one starts off really fast and goes really, really fast. And uh, there are a few other rides. Yeah, I don't want to go on Tower of Terror. The first time I went on our first trip, uh, I got really scared because I was also really little. And I'm just not a big fan of uh, drops. And if you're not, I wouldn't recommend going on it. Because it's uh, going high, low. And if you get nauseous really easily, I wouldn't go on it. Another kind of, I wouldn't call it a mistake, but I really wanted to ride Peter Pan. And while we were at Magic Kingdom, I had noticed that the wait time was kind of low. So I had everyone go over there. We got in line. I don't know what happened. I'm not sure if they were cleaning the ride because this was back in March. So it was still a lot of COVID protocols. But we ended up waiting, I think, 45 minutes for that ride. And ultimately, I was the only one that wanted to ride it. Now, my son Aiden and my daughter Amelia, they were fine with it. They didn't care, but they really love Disney. So standing in the lines isn't as big of a deal for them. Asher and Cameron weren't too happy about that. They didn't love the ride. And then standing in line for a really long time for a ride they didn't love just kind of put, not a damper, but it was just kind of like, oh, we shouldn't have done that. Yeah, there like some rides I would stand in line like one for the uh, Avatar ride. I that was worth standing in line for because uh, it was a really cool ride. And then afterwards they had some, a gift shop and some a place where you could get drinks. But there are just some lines that I would not stand in if it's not like one of your must two rides. Like if you're just going there to go on a ride, I wouldn't stand in line longer than forty minutes because. That 40 minutes you could be going and waiting in a line that you, on a ride that you would want to go on. Yes. And so tip number eight is let them ride the rides they love multiple times. Yeah, my, my favorite ride there was Space Mountain. It's always been my favorite ride. It's just so much fun. There's crazy drops and turns, and it's in the pitch black, so you don't know where you're going. So it's very exciting. You don't go too fast. It's at a normal speed. And it's just a fun experience to go on. Another ride I really liked was uh, Big Thunder. It was just, it's a normal outside roller coaster. You go pretty fast, but not super fast, and it's outside, so it's like a little bumpy, and you get to see parts of Disney when you get to the top of it before you do a semi drop. It's not really a big drop, but yeah, it was worth standing in. I mean, that line was very short, not long at all, maybe 15 minutes. Another ride I liked was the Everest ride. It was very fun. You just, that line was also like 20 minutes. Didn't even feel like 20 minutes. So, and uh, you just went around, you did a loop. And then at one point you go all the way to the top and then you start going backwards and you do a turn backwards. You go and then you do a big drop and it was just really fun. Yeah, I think we rode Space Mountain twice. Everest twice, and I think we might have rode Big Thunder like four times. Yeah, it, it was yeah, because the lines were always so short. The lines were so short, we could be, we were able to go on it a lot whenever there were uh, times where we just had extra time to waste before going somewhere. Yeah, I think it's important to to really accentuate the things that they like. Because then that will leave them with good memories of the trip. And who knows, they might want to go back. My ninth tip is to plan your quick service meals and snacks ahead of time. 
So right now at Disney, you have to use mobile order to order your food. So when you go to your app and you open up a restaurant that you're interested in ordering food from, you have to choose a time that you're going to be there to pick it up. Now on busy days, your time slot might be hours out. So planning those meals ahead of time is so important. There were times when we were at our hotel that I was already ordering our food for our lunch just to make sure that we got that window when I knew we were going to be hungry and our food was going to be ready. So I would say, okay, guys, our, it's time to go get lunch. And we'd go over to the restaurant and we'd get our food. That way nobody got hangry. I think hangry people at theme parks is a disaster. Yeah, hangry people standing in uh, long lines is not a good mix. Me and my dad get hangry pretty often and we're not in the mood if we're standing in a lawn line and we don't have a food in our systems, we get really cranky and it's just not worth it. Yeah, I wouldn't say it happens often, but I would say that it definitely happens if we're not prepared. That's why I like to try to be prepared. Keeping people fed will keep them happy, which when they're happy, they're more likely to have a good time. And my last tip for traveling to Disney with people that might not love Disney is to let them sleep. I am someone who would love to rope drop every single park every single day. However, I realized on our last trip that some of the people in my family, they don't feel the same way. And one of the days that we ended up rope dropping, I kind of had some grouchy people for almost the entire day just because they were really tired. So after that, I realized maybe instead of rope dropping, we will just stay out late. So I let everyone sleep in. And I'm not talking sleep in till mid-afternoon. I would let them sleep in till like 8.30, 8, 9, and then I would go get breakfast, bring it back. And we just kind of took our time getting up and it wasn't rushed. And it made such a difference and really improved the rest of our trip. Yeah, I'm a big person. I like to stay up and sleep in. I'm not really a big person on waking up early. So it was very, really nice that I got to sleep in a bit and we weren't going early to get there first, to be the first person at each park right when it opened. Now, there were some parks that opened later, so we could be able to sleep in and still be one of the first people there. But I would not want to be one of the people who stayed up until 11 p.m. and then went, get get to your resort around 12 a.m. We'll go to sleep around 12.30 after you get ready and then wake up at 5 a.m. to go to the parks. It just, that doesn't really make sense to me. I like my sleep and it just, it helped me a lot and I wasn't really a grouchy person throughout the trip. I think ultimately it's getting to know the people that you're with, the people that you're traveling with, and what what it's going to take to help them get the best out of their trip. Asher, do you have any last tips or any advice to someone who might be going to Disney with someone who doesn't love Disney? Just honestly, let them kind of be themselves. Don't force them to do anything because I'd make them not want to do it more. Just let them be themselves and to be patient with them because then they could get really grouchy if you're not really patient and it could turn into a whole big disaster. I love Disney. I love traveling to Disney. I love all things Disney. And so sometimes it is hard when I look at, you know, my family, a couple of my family members and they don't love it as much as I do. But instead of trying to force it on them, I just want to present it to them in a positive light so that they can understand why I love it. Another thing, just kind of a last tip, maybe for older kids or adults, is learning more about Walt and the reason that he started the parks. That really changed my whole perspective on Disney when is when I started listening to audiobooks about Walt and why he created Disneyland. And so it made me appreciate the park so much more. And I think an older teen or even an adult, I think they might take that and it will help them see the parks differently. Okay, so that's all for our show today. Thank you, Asher, so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. If you're enjoying the show, please consider leaving a positive review on Apple Podcasts. This is really the best way to help my show grow. 
This little show of mine was just a dream that I kind of came up with after we came home from our last Disney trip, and I would love to hear all of the feedback from my listeners. We will be back next week with a brand new travel tale. Until then, this is Jenny, and may all your Disney travel dreams become a reality.